Hey everyone, welcome back to CNR Studios. My name is Corey. We're in my studio, and today I have an exciting video. If you would have watched my m most recent haul video uh, from a couple weeks ago, you would have noticed that I purchased the M50 Sherman or Isherman used by the Israeli Defense Force. I was really excited to build it, but also I've had this stocked away for a couple years now and thought I really need to get this built as well. So today we're going to have an in-depth view uh, both at the M50 Isherman and then in the M50 Super Sherman, which came after the M50, but before the M50 in Brickmania history. So we're going to kind of compare and contrast. Both bring some pretty cool features to the table in like the historiography of Brickmania and what they do as a third party Lego company. Also be looking a little brief synopsis about the history of the two. I have a couple books that I like to use. One book about Sherman's and then the DK Smithsonian tank book, which was largely done by the Tank Museum in Bovington, England. So these are two very good sources and we'll get a little bit in depth on that. Otherwise, I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll start talking here in a sec. All right, so we got the camera turned around. I believe the first thing we're gonna take a look at is actually the older one in Brickmania history, but the more recent kind of of the two in Israeli tank history. So that'll be the M51, nicknamed the Super Sherman. So the uh, uh, country of Israel was founded in 1948 in May. Very shortly after they had to create the Israeli Defense Force or IDF. The Israeli as a nation, almost from the outset, fought for their independence and their legitimacy as a nation, backed, of course, by the United States and other NATO and United Nations countries. So while Israel was looking to build up its defense force, they used a lot of, well, ex excess U.S. and French and other Allied armor. So the M51 Super Sherman basis is a... M4A1 Sherman tank that's been upgraded with HVSS suspension, which is simulated here, though it is not actually functioning, it's just simulated to look like it, as well as a Cummings engine. The turret you'll notice is elongated into the rear. That is to assist with the loading and recoil mechanism of the larger French gun. This is also known as the T23 turret. Overall, construction and build of the tank from Brickmania was pretty good. It uses, as you can see, not Brickmania track links. It uses the LEGO Technic track links, which roll really nice. Um, I find that models that use like an actual like Technic gear as the drive wheel seem to roll really well. So in kind of size comparison to some other Brickmania tanks, this is very similar in the size to the M4A3 Easy 8 Sherman. However, if you watch the most recent Brick Mania uh, sit rep involving the M4A3 E8, the newer one that Nate designed, it is a little bit large in scale compared to the actual blueprints, but I think it's kind of fitting for this model. Both of these kits were designed by Dan, and as you can see, they share a lot of design similarities, including the manlet of the turret, the frontal hull, even the shaping as well. So the M50 was, is, or M51, excuse me, is a couple years old now. It was built as part of the main battle tank line that Brickmania was doing, where every month for almost like a two-year period, they were coming out with main battle tanks. They started in recent history and kind of went into backwards in time. Uh, I've gotten a few of them, um, mainly the M51, the M48A3, the T-64, and then of course M1A1 Abrams, the older one, not the newer one done by Mary Wilson. So in terms of like brick mania, this did something pretty unique for the time. If you'll notice, unlike most brick mania barrels, which are brick arms barrel, this in fact is a 3D printed model. So it's a 3D printed barrel done in house with a 3D printed muzzle brake. That's pretty accurate to the, Israel, or the French design. Um, France played a big role in the development of Israeli armor. Mainly they liked their guns and adapted them to the already existing U.S. Sherman tanks. As far as other notes of the tank, you'll notice all the markings, the turret marking, 
the marking on the barrel, unit marking, drive wheel, that is all stickers. So stickers are the bane of most people's existence. Um, I got them on as best I could. I'm not really always that good with stickers. However, it does use them. If you notice, it comes with one Israeli minifigure with a Brick Arms helmet. Figure I believe was done by Lando. Has some good texturing on it. Pretty simple design. Uh, it is just amazing to see how well they've advanced in their printing and just overall everything that they do. You'll notice it comes with a Brick Arms M2 HB as well as a 30 caliber gun and like a pintle mount up front. It does come with some nice greebling as well. You can addition some jerry cans along the sides, maybe simulation of like storage boxes, extra tracks, extra road wheel, and of course the pioneer tools. You also notice it does have a, if I pull it the right way, that is for transportation. And the barrel would sit like that backwards when it's being transported on a flatbed uh, truck or train more than likely. Overall, I really do enjoy the model. I thought it built pretty well. It has some opening hatches. Um, the hatches down here really, yeah, they do open, but they really are kind of hard to fit a minifigure. They're more simulation only. You could fit, if I can even close this, uh, two minifigures up top, one in the gunner's hatch, one in the commander's hatch. So that is the M50. It is a bit bigger than the M51, or excuse me, the M51 is a bit bigger than the M50. So the M50, whoops, put that back, is going to be up next. So the M50 actually probably has more in common with the M4 A38 which will be really cool to see this compared to the newer one done by Nate. And I really came excited to do a comparison between the M4A38, the old done by Dan, and the new one done by Nate. So this basically is an M4A4 tank uh, with a different suspension, upgraded turret. So this basically they share a very similar turret design. That one's just a little bit bigger. This again is to accommodate a French gun. The French gun is based from the AMX-13, which Brickmania has also done. So if you notice, the, tur the guns are very, very similar. They're basically high velocity 75 millimeter guns that shot uh, really well high velocities and also was able to take out pretty thick armor. So first thing you'll notice, the color difference, this is in a light tan versus dark tan. Uh, both are probably accurate to the time. The M50 would have seen specifically service in the Six Day War, whereas the M51 would have seen service both in the Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War that happened in the 70s. So right off the gate, you'll notice a big upgrade, uh, one big difference right away. It's a little bit narrower and it uses the, I believe, uh, double wide brick mania track links. Um, the track links are fit a purpose. Uh, I don't always find them to be the smoothest rolling. Now this one uses round plates and tiles for the drive wheels. So uh, unlike this one, which actually uses a gear, I find the gear to bite better and give you better um, smoother rolling. However, these work fine. Lego tracks are they really don't make any to fit this width. They usually just kind of like a single wide chain link and then double wide track used like in some of the bigger um, construction equipment that you'll see. So you'll notice on this one, it uses a brick arms barrel now within a 3D muzzle brake. It's the same 3D muzzle brake as on the AMX 13 that Brick Mania did as well. What though stands this tank apart from the M51 is printing. Um, Printing, UV printing especially, was happening back a couple years ago by Brickmania, but in much smaller batches. If you would have watched the recent tour that Beyond the Brick did with Brickmania during World War Brick, you would have seen the amount of effort, time, and money Brickmania has invested in printing. So on this tank, if you turn it down, you have the drive wheel printed as well as these guys here. They're printed on the face to give it that tan color to blend in. You have storage printed here you have like extra storage probably rations or ammunition 
you have uh, compartments or hatches printed here. You have a printed unit or license number, essentially. Down here you have the access hatch, rear access hatch for the crew. More storage printing along here with the crate. The cross element printing for the tank markings. As well as printing, so it's brick armor's barrel that's been printed on with these white markings as well. It did come with one sticker that was totally optional to put on. It runs across the top of the turret. I thought it just added some extra nice looks to it. It was done well. It's a pretty easy one to put on. Uh, anywhere you would have messed up is mainly covered up by both the machine gun and this kind of little gray one by one round tile. Like the previous model, they both come, it also comes with a 30 cal pintle mount and as well as an M250. For the minifig itself, you'll note it is 3D printed helmet which is pretty cool. That's a big upgrade over the past, as well as the UV printing with color shifting. That's a big thing Lando does is color shift. It really helps when finding the right minifig body color. So color shifting, it has a pistol pouch. Uh, this one is in like a cross draw. It has radio communication has set up, uh, pouches on his pants as well on his blouse and just the normal sweat, grease, and grime accommodating armor. This has one hatch up top that opens a simulated hatch to the side. It also has opening hatches underneath. One thing that Sergeant Nate, or Nate Oz, known on Instagram, has been accommodating in his newer Lion of Sherman tanks is interior details. So if you notice, this does have simulation of the engine. It also has interior detail of a driver's seat as well up front if you would like to do that. All right, so we're going to get some looks. I will have some kind of B-roll footage going at the end, getting all angles of the tank. You'll notice there for size comparison, how they look. I think they are beautiful looking tanks. They each kind of represent some things a little bit different about the history of Brickmania and what they do in the third party world. If I were to have pick one over the other, I do really like the M50, the Isherman. Um, you'll hear the term Super Sherman used interchangeably in my research and looking. I think this was known as the Isherman, this was known as Super Sherman. They collectively have been kind of known and going by the uh, Super Shermans and uh, the history I've read. It's a moniker that has stuck to both tanks and they are very similar to each other. Uh, it would be easy to mistake uh, if you really don't know the differences. So as for cons for them, um, the M51, the Super Sherman, it's obviously the stickers. The 3D printed barrel, while nice, does fall off and come off pretty easy. Um, I have the M26 purging tank, which also uses a 3D printed barrel that has issues staying on as well. Uh, one thing with this model, the barrel doesn't really pose too well. A lot of times it'll shift on you. You have to get it like set just right to remain pose, but it might over time fall down. Uh, just not as strong as a pivot right now. And that might change over time as the plastic swells with moisture and things. Obviously, this one has printing, which makes it look really, really nice. I find this tank to be really well built. Also has a gun rest on the back for transportation. Also includes the Pioneer tools. I'm really happy to have both of these in my collection. Uh, I really like Brickmania tanks and collecting their tanks, especially their Sherman line and American armor. Uh, I would like to collect other tanks from both the Soviet and Germans, however. Just for sake of economics, I've kind of stuck with the American armor. Uh, and it's just been really, really cool. And I kind of branched out a little bit to the Israeli armor because I have three Israeli tanks, but two of them are based on the Sherman. This one actually was my first tank I ever bought from Brickmania, which is unique because the turret elevates and depresses, not the gun. But anyway, that's a different tank for a different day. Otherwise, I'm gonna turn the camera back around real quick and we'll have a little quick uh, closing and outro. 
and talk about what's coming up next. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video, kind of an in-depth look at two awesome Brickmania models. Uh, I always give us a lot of time. Are they worth it? They are a premium product. They are expensive. Um, ultimately, I think yes. It's all about what you like and when you collect. Uh, if I had infinite amount of money, I would buy every model that comes out, but because of economics and collecting in space, it's just not gonna happen. So I pick and choose what I get. I save up for them, uh, work overtime, work some side jobs. That kind of helps fuel the hobby. But each of these I like, it's kind of a unique look at both historically the model as well as the model in terms of Brickmania history, going from beginning of 3D printing and mainly stickers to 3D printing on helmets, color shifting on minifigs, brick link, or brick mini track links, as well as almost all printing just one sticker. If you look through Brick Mania's website, most times a lot of their new models are coming with no or very little stickers. Though I did know, notice on the M4A388 that Nate did, it does come with quite a sticker pack to kind of make it look like want. We forewent uh, printing just because of cost. That's a topic for a different day because, as we all know, during the Lego, I guess the price increase in August, with a lot of trickle down effect both on the and the third party companies like Brickman. So, these are pretty awesome models. Really enjoyed them. Can't wait to do more tank reviews in the future. I have a couple of Stuarts I need to review. I think that would be a pretty cool comparison as well. Different generation of the Stuart tank. I also have a Brick Veteran kit I want to talk about. I've had for you know, over a year, uh, so I need to get that out. I built it finally this week, and we'll take a look at that soon as well. And as more always, we'll have some vlogs, some unboxings as we go. So, if you enjoyed the content of this video, please do all the YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, please comment, please like, please subscribe. I am new at this, uh, as you can tell. I'm getting trying to get more and more comfortable, I do. Um, kind of get choked up a couple times here and there, but I am trying. I'm not very good at editing, so don't expect this to be a very flashy production. Uh, there are other channels for that. Uh, Brook Foundation, Shy Times My Time, they do some of the best um, theatrical looking videos. That is not my skill set, my strong suit, or what I have a like a history involved in. I know a lot more about the history, about the understanding of the weapons themselves, and of course, being involved in the Lego community is a passion of mine. So, awesome B-roll uh, video rolling throughout the video. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.